Greetings, I love and thank you for stopping by today. This is the first character dive that I have done in a long time. This week's character was selected by my wonderful friends and followers over on Facebook. So who are we diving into today? Why the great meme master himself, Boromir, from the Lord of the Rings trilogy. small disclaimer, these are all my opinions on the character. I'm fairly certain there are other people that have gone into much deeper dives on it and have different opinions. And we're allowed to have different opinions on the matter. I am going to say though, like if you don't like it, I'm sorry, they're mine. Deal with it. Be nice in the comments. I am a fan of Lord of the Rings series world kind of as a whole. I grew up you know, reading it and watching it. When I say watching it, I mean like the cartoon version where Gollum was creepy and there was that guy with the really weird like wavy voice. <laughs> and I'm in the process of making a Hobbit costume because I will be going to New Zealand this year and I'm so excited. But anyways, I digress. Boromir. We are going to talk about Boromir and I am done geeking out over it. So if you've never been around for my character dives, this is this is how the breakdown's gonna happen. I'll give you a little bit of background on the character, we talk about his positives and negatives and traits and how those play out, and we are also going to talk about his archetype. And if you don't know what archetypes are, go ahead and check out this video up here first and then come back and join us. I won't be going as deep as in the books because I feel like more people have watched the movie then they have read the books and granted, you know, Tolkien does kind of get a little long-winded in his, his, his descriptions, but if you have time, please read. But more or less the movie does sort of capture the essence of what Boromir is. So if that's your only understanding of him, hey, that's perfectly fine. I sort of scripted this based off of the movie because then you guys would be able to see it a little bit easier than going too far deep into the books which would take a lot longer because then I would have to find pages. And I have like that big ass version that's like leather bound. So Boromir is of the noble class, he is the son of Denethor who is the steward of Gondor and a steward is someone who looks after something in place of like the initial ruler, like the king, the king of Gondor has been gone since his sealed door. Spoiler alert, it's Aragorn, but uh, yeah, anyways, his father is there. He has a younger brother, Faramir, who gets the short end of the stick a lot from his father, and Boromir tries to sort of buffer in between them, and Faramir's like, my dad hates me, and Boromir's like, no, he doesn't, he loves you, I promise. <laughs> Boromir is also a very skilled fighter, he is a leader, a captain, he has many victories underneath his belt. He is well loved in Gondor. So when it comes to the start of the Fellowship of the Ring, Boromir is at Rivendell to sort of beseech aid of Rivendell because of the continuous attacks from Mordor. He's there on behalf of his people. He loves his people tremendously. And then he ends up on the council and then we know kind of where he goes from there. Insert the meme of memes. <laughs> Boromir is initially part of the fellowship until the point where he tries to take the ring away from Frodo. As a way to make amends, he lays down his life for Merry and Pippin when the orcs come and take them away, which ultimately results in his own death. And he finally acknowledges Aragorn as his king because he did not like him when they first met. It's a very sweet and poignant scene and just in the movie it was such a beautiful, wonderful representation of positive masculinity and just I'm here for more gentle, gentle warriors please. That's basically Boromir in a nutshell. So now we're going to talk about his personality traits, positive and negative. On the positive side of things, Boromir is a very caring individual. He cares about his people, he cares about his brother, and throughout the travels with the Fellowship you can see that he does sort of grow to care for his companion, deferring to Aragorn, having fun with the hobbits, enjoying it in jokes. He's a very easy guy to get along with and you know, he wants to see those around him safe and happy and taken care of. He's also very intelligent and strong, which really come to play from how many years he's had to defend Minas Tirith from 
the forces of Mordor. Not to mention he's a noble son, so we can speculate that he's had some type of the education in reading, writing, math, histories, and other languages, and so on and so forth. On the flip side, I did not know what to call this when Legolas tells him that Aragorn is the actual heir to the throne and he's like, Gundor has no king, Gundor needs no king, and he seems to eye him with suspicion. I don't know if that's from a place of jealousy or just a lot of unplaced emotions that he doesn't know how to process, so he lashes out, which is really a negative trait. Like, you're okay to have big emotions and it's okay to not understand how to handle those emotions, but being an asshole to other people is not the way to handle it. He is also desperate, 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 desperate to protect and save his people. He wants to use the ring to completely defeat the forces of Mordor so that his people can be safe and live in peace and prosper like they once did under the reign of the king. And it's that desperation that drives a lot of his mistakes. It's what allows the ring to sort of latch onto him and whisper and appeal to the darker aspects of himself. Maybe the size that he's not fully aware of or the size that he's not so proud of. I mean, he is willing to go to great lengths to try to get this ring and then that guilt and that desperation to try to make up for it leads him to lay down his life. And desperation comes from a thousand different places. It, but I primarily think it comes from his caring side of wanting to take care of his family, his people, his culture. So it's good to care, but it's not good to care so much so that you're willing to burn everything around you to get the thing that you think that you need to take care of something. On to his archetype. There are some who I think would put him into the hero category because he's strong, he wields a sword, you know, he gives up his life to save others, but honestly, that is not where I envision Boromir to be. That's Aragorn. Aragorn is the hero. Frodo is the hero. Samwise Gamgee is a very unlikely hero, but he is a hero. Boromir is a caregiver. In all of his interactions with other people, especially with his brother, the core of what his desperation is comes from a place of wanting to take care of the people around him. And if you've noticed, I've said that a lot. <laughs> Honestly, I really could not think of anything else that would fit him but this. And in my perspective, Boromir is, a, is an excellent example of the downside of over caring. When you care without parameters or without restrictions, it can lead to a lot of unhealthy behaviors. If you're over caring about something and then here's an outsider that shakes that foundation, it's going to lead you to sort of maybe lash out at them. It can also lead you to do things that you never thought that you were going to do because you need to do whatever it takes to protect this to hell with you and what you need and you may not stop to think is this the best way to go about this that is the first character dive of this new season yes as a reminder i am doing these things by seasons <laughs> i will stop at a particular point and have a quiet time to sort of plan out the whole flow of the next season but anyways i digress be sure to follow me on all of my social media sites or at least sign up for my newsletter. I promise I will not bombard you with every with all of the emails and all of the things. I literally only do it once a quarter. You'll get extra behind the scenes information as well as freebies and this quarter's freebie is the first chapter of The Last Light which is the third book in my Tale of Blade and Darkness series. You're gonna want to read this one because it's gonna be a hot minute before I get to the others because I'm taking a series break because apparently three books is my limit. <laughs> Anyways, that is all that I have.
time for you guys today. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. If you have a character that you would like to see me tear into and dive into, please comment down below, make a comment on my social medias, or let me know. I'll see what I can do for you. So, until I see you guys next time, bye!